Okay. Hello, it's me, Didi. Welcome to part two of my Doki Doki Literature Club playthrough. If you haven't seen part one, go watch that first. If you don't know about the links below, check that out. There are content warnings for this game. It's deceptively cute, but things have not gotten dark yet. I'm waiting for it. Let me make sure that game capture is working on time today. So let's load our save. Okay, so far so good. You will lose on save progress. Are you sure you would? Yep, yep, mm-hmm. Okay. So this is our second poem that we're writing for the literature club. So let's do this quick like we did last time. It's kind of like a, not like a flashcard test, but just like what words stick out to me first. So we'll go with despise, nightgown, comfort, intellectual, whoops, I don't know what that other one was, melancholy, tenacious, summer. Contamination, eternity, vacation, nibble, uncanny. I don't know what this one is. Eff effulgent, forgive, skipping, atone, calm, daydream, disoriented. Sensation. Okay, everything's working. Awesome. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Dee Dee. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Uh, that's, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayuri? What? Nah, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah! Sayuri nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah, ha, ha. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayuri. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club, club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ooh, uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Hmm? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Aha! I wasn't listening or anything. I, it was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Dee Dee to let me borrow some money. That's, don't get me involved like that, Sayuri. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. How responsible. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Damn. Ah, uh, did, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayuri, I... Guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? I don't like that foreshadowing. 
Don't let her fool you. Sayuri knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayuri. <laughs> what the hell? Pwap, good noise. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayuri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayuri glances around. I, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Nasuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayuri hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayuri rapidly... Rapidly? Yeah, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Sayuri suddenly clasped her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I give you that one? Fine. Still. I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Suri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayuri off of her. Hmm. Sayuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <gasps> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouth full, Sayuri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayuri? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Hmm. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Mm, that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds so cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Dee Dee. Okay. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. 
I chose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Ah, uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no, I was just kind of waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Eh? We're just... Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We were just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to... Wait, or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Dee Dee in club activities? Uh, uh. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hm. Then let's go, Dee Dee. Ah. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Well, damn. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I sp Spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that, it made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No. Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Dee Dee. How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light shower into a hurricane. Uh, n no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, mm. Yuri lifts her head. Dee Dee, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Weird little sidebar. Dee Dee, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Celsius? Fahrenheit? Nobody knows. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything... Shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins, begins measuring the tea leaves. 
To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Dee Dee. Didn't we meet yesterday? I'm just gonna keep going. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Dee Dee, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly. <sighs> so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Ah. Uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we, we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, it's totally the posture. Absolutely. It's nothing else. No. Mm -mm. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Zieri's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Does tea and chocolate go well together? I wouldn't have thought that. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time. Uh, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri sides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Yuri hands me my teacup, holding it with my hand that's not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Oh yeah, I guess if you're holding a book with this hand, and then holding a cup with the other, which is touching her shoulder. Yeah. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Oh, she's so cute. Look at the dust moving. I like this. I s I'm probably saying that too soon. Probably saying it too soon. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. 
I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Look at that little candy! Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um, Didi. S sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well, y you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Ah, uh, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Just like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. <sighs> that cut. Holy shit. Okay, everyone. Whoa. Ah. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Didi, can you help Yuri put that tea stuff away? Right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. <sighs> okay, this is fine. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. All right, we're just gonna go down the list again. Sayori. Okay. Ooh, I like this one, Dee Dee. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out poems, if they're good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. But then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayuri. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayuri, that is unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? 
Maybe I'm getting better at expressing myself after all. Thanks, Dee Dee. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, this is way longer than the last one. Okay, my nose is congested, but I've got this. All right. Bottles. I pop off my... What? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret where I keep all my dreams. Secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in the bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lots of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Holy shit, Sayuri. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Ex like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sayuri, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <sighs> Alright, this is fine. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll get as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this reminds me of Sayuri's poem from yesterday. Eh? 
You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayuri has a type? All of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, can someone so... er... fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say, we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I have a hard time tolerating her. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Just feel the gossip. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. The scrolling in this game's weird. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Seltzer water, by the way. It's actually pretty good. Ginger peach. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. Sorry, it snuck up on me. I wrote it to be easy to relate to... Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you and think less of you. Or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Ellipses, longer ellipses. Yuri stares at the poem with, with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Dee Dee, this one might be even better than yesterday's. I want to read our poems. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? 
Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just... being appreciated like this, I guess. That's so nice. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you... Oh, I forgot how lovely her handwriting is. <laughs> okay, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. It gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious was well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken a liking. Wait, nope. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them yeah, I take it, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Hmm, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? Some about someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking how about it doesn't matter what you're into, as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. I, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies, but I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? 
Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Dee Dee. That, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. One more. Monica. Hi again, Dee Dee. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm? I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. Like she's a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much more personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean, I wish she didn't keep so much to herself, but still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyways. Monica kind of whispers, laughs part to me. Oh, shit. I think it said that was just a hunch. Well, that's not really anything... There's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. All right, let's take a look. Mmm, it's a hell of a title. Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of... It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game.
What? <laughs> you never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. <laughs> Saved. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything together. Anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <laughs> um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. So Yuri's putting it all in the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayuri, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting up those posters, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No. Sayuri, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes... And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I... I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, 
Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to, pref uh, to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N -n no way, Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Oh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense inspection on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the... I forgot that word. It's not resuscitation. Recitation. There we go. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayuri? I I'll go next. Wha wha Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayuri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see. I see. Okay, then. Sayuri begins reading her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayuri is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayuri's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayuri meant when she said she likes reading my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone than I thought I knew through and through. Sayuri finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayuri. <laughs> even Didi liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayuri. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. 
eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hm. Don't make me go before Dee Dee. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Dee Dee lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone- oh shit, yeah, that's a lot of eyeballs. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Wh why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean... Doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I would think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all of this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's as if for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, and I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayuri? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Dee Dee. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayuri. Sorry, I was spacing out. 
Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayuri fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> Realistically, I think I would walk home with Yuri. I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sayuri. We're going to create a save file real quick. Yuri. Walking home with Yuri. Huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Okay, we will once again create a save file and we're gonna quit yes okay I kind of like this pacing of doing like a day's worth in an episode like in a part of this playthrough so assuming that this stays the same pace we're gonna continue that unless I get completely absorbed into this game which is very possible but I think the first episode started very sweetly. This second one is alluding to a lot of weird things. Like Sayuri wanting to write until she dies. Yuri thinking that doing this speech will kill her. Uh, the writing tip of the day to make a save file before I make a choice because you can't always take back the things that you thought were right. So we're going to end this here and I'll see you next time for part three.